आप सभी का स्वागत है ऑरियन अकेडमी में सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट आवर स्ट्रेटेजी फॉर जनरल स्टडीज हिस्ट्री एक्चुअली वट वी आर गोइंग टू डू लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस दिस थिंग सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टर्ट ए कोर्स ऑन जनरल स्टडीज हिस्ट्री फॉर यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेस एग्जामिनेशन इन केस ऑफ जनरल स्टडीज हिस्ट्री यू नो that the different segments of the history that is in you have you have to go through history in for your preliminary examination and mains examination as well so in preliminary examination in general studies paper 1 you have history and especially in the mains examination that is also in general studies paper 1 which is a descriptive paper there you have also history so practically what we are going to do we are going to start an integrated course for the preliminary and mains examination with respect to general studies history okay so that's is going to be the agenda of the class so what actually we are going to talk about or we are going to discuss here in this session so basically jo hum yahan pe discuss karenge so in in next few minutes that is nothing but the strategy for preparing history so strategy in the sense that we will try to analyze the trend of questions which are coming from history for in, in upsc civil services preliminary examination and as well the mains examination how many questions are coming from history and how many questions are coming from which segment of the history okay ncert se kitne questions aa raha hai medio health se kitne questions aa raha hai modern se kitne questions aa raha hai and world history all you know that it's not a part of the preliminary examination but it is a part of the mains examination so there also we will analyze that how many questions are coming from uh world history in the mains examination and we will prepare it accordingly okay and i will also going to i will also discuss or i am going to discuss the sources okay sources for preparing history from where you have to go through history okay so let's start our discussion okay and uh, one more thing what i am going to uh, discuss in this session that there are you know history is a very relevant subject with respect to your whole upsc preparation entire upsc preparation especially for the general studies how that is i am also going to discuss today okay so that's going to be the agenda of the class okay so general studies history okay so first uh let's just see the syllabus for the preliminary and mains examination just have a glance okay so uh in case of the preliminary examination what upsc has written in its syllabus in its notification or how upsc has designed the syllabus for the preliminary examination with respect to history so upsc has written just one line what is that one line history of india and indian national movement nothing has been written except that okay so history of india includes all you know that ancient history and medieval history and indian national movement very specifically i can tell you that is nothing but up to 1947 that means indian freedom struggle so that's the part of the preliminary examination that's the syllabus of the preliminary examination so upsc has not mentioned it very elaborately that which parts of the history are going to be the syllabus going to be in the syllabus in case of the preliminary examination but in the mains examination here upsc is very elaborate okay so here upsc has discussed each and everything upsc has given the syllabus uh, or designed the syllabus in such way that you can understand that which parts of the history are going to be the part of your syllabus and how uh, you know um, differently you have to approach history for upsc civil services examination ओके इन केस ऑफ द मेंस एग्जामिनेशन आप यहां पे देख सकते हैं सो बेसिकली इन केस ऑफ द मेंस एग्जामिनेशन देयर यूपीएससी हैज स्टार्टेड विद द इंडियन आर्ट एंड कल्चर ऑल यू नो यू आई गाइस आई थिंक इन मेनी केसेस द एस्पिरेंट्स बेसिकली व्हाट दे आर वेरी मच यू नो स्केप्टिकल एंड बेसिकली इन मेनी केसेस दे आर वरीड अबाउट दिस प्रिपरेशन ऑफ आर्ट एंड कल्चर बट स्पेसिफिकली आई नो दैट सम ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स आई इंटरेक्ट विद मेनी स्टूडेंट्स एंड दे बेसिकली टेल मी दैट सर आर्ट एंड कल्चर पोर्शन इज वेरी बोरिंग so uh, if you join our course i can promise you that art and culture is going to be one of your most favorite topic okay so let's um uh, start so this uh, reading the syllabus for the mains examination so indian culture will cover the salient aspect of art forms so basically here art and architecture from ancient to modern times okay ancient se leke modern time tak art and culture aapko padhna hoga okay so that means uh, art and culture with respect to the ancient history art and culture with respect to medieval history and art and culture with respect to the modern history all you have to go through here so that what that is what upsc has mentioned in its syllabus so next portion is modern indian history okay from about the middle of the 18th century until the present significant event so that is the difference between preliminary and mains examination just please focus on this particular point okay yahan pe thoda sa dhyan dijiye in case of the preliminary examination they have mentioned that in case of the modern india you have indian national movement in the syllabus but in case of the mains examination you have modern history or the syllabus of the modern history has been designed 
have been designed in such a way that you have modern history modern history here includes indian freedom struggle plus post independence period post independence means what is happening up post 1947 okay so what is happening up to today is in your syllabi okay in case of okay that is part of the current affairs but especially all the significant events which have occurred after 1947 is in your syllabi especially with respect to modern india in the mains examination clear i think i am fair enough to clear it okay नेक्स्ट इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल ये अलग से यहाँ पे यूपीएससी ये डाला है इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल सो इन इन केस ऑफ द इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल द वेरियस स्टेजेस ऑफ इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इवन द वेरियस इंपॉर्टेंट कंट्रीब्यूटर्स एंड देयर कंट्रीब्यूशन इन इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री सो यू हैव टू गो थ्रू दी होल हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडियन फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम दिस इलेवन नेक्स्ट इज द पोस्ट इंडिपेंडेंस कंसोलिडेशन दैट इज वट आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट post independence consolidation that means post 1947 period that is also part of your syllabi okay okay at the same time world history that's the different part that is not in the in, in your preliminary examination so uh, in case of the world history you know basically the ancient world history is not the part of your syllabi and more medieval world history is also not the part of your syllabi so it's going to be the only the 18th century it's it's going to be start started from 18th century okay 18th century 18th century se leke the important events of the 18th century you know the industrial revolution revolution world wars redrawal of redrawal of nation national boundaries colonization decolonization so all these things up to the modern time okay so that is also so modern world history is the part of your syllabi not the ancient and medieval world history so i think you have understood the syllabi very briefly so in case of the preliminary examination if i just uh, categorically tell you in case of the preliminary examination you have to go through ancient history you have to go through medieval history you have to go through modern history modern history in this case of the preliminary examination it is up to 1947 okay because upsc has very Uh, you know precisely mentioned that upsc has mentioned it that in case of the modern history in case of the preliminary examination so indian national movement is going to be the part of the syllabi not the post independence but if we see that in case of the mains examination you have ancient history in your syllabi okay and you have medieval history in your syllabi you have modern history in your syllabi you have world history which is the extra thing and in case of the modern history you have to go through post independence here which is extra from and uh, the uh, preliminary syllabi okay so that is what the full syllabi of the examination now let's talk about the number of questions which are coming in the preliminary examination from history as a discipline okay so from 2011 onwards i have prepared this table and where i uh, want to show you that how many questions are coming from history and art and culture because i have included art and culture also i don't think that art and culture is a separate subject it's a integral part of history so i have designed this table in such a way where i have included art and culture and history as well so from 2011 onwards i have given here that how many questions are coming from history and art and culture history means the three parts of history ancient medieval and modern history and art and culture okay so if we see this table you can find out that in 2011 13 questions came from from history in 2012 20 questions in 2013 15 questions and in this same fashion you can find out that in 2019 17 questions okay so uh, the common observation and the important observation which you are going to make from here that almost 13 say in the year you can find out in in the year 2018 21 questions came from history so it 13 it but it varies and the minimum number of question came in 2011 that was 13 question and maximum number of question came in 2018 that is 21 questions so 13 se leke 21 question tak aa raha hai history se okay so it's going to be very important on your, uh, in your entire preparation of the civil services examination because you know in the gen studies paper 1 in your preliminary examination you have to answer how many questions 100 questions okay and each question carries how many marks two marks so the total examination is going to be of 200 marks okay and in this 200 marks if uh, the general trend of questions which are coming from history and art and culture that is mostly 15 to 20 questions you can find it out here okay 15 to 20 questions and another fun i can just share with you that one thing upsc is doing so mostly doing 
if you see it in case of 2011 this is an odd year can you find it out and in case of 2011 13 questions okay in case of 2012 you can find out 20 questions okay in case of 2013 once again 15 questions okay and in case of 2014 you can find out 20 questions so in case of the even years most number of questions are coming from history so somehow UPSC has found out a, a relation between even years and odd years and history okay just a joke apart okay so basically in case of the audience we are finding it out that almost 15 questions around 15 questions are coming from history and art and culture and in case of even years we can find it out that almost 20 questions are coming from history so we can understand easily that or we can consider that 15 to 20 questions are coming from history and art and culture so weightage of history and art and culture in the next slide we can find it out that 15 to 20 questions and this fun information that alternatively or alternate in the alter every alternate year especially 15 or 20 question in case of the odd years it is 15 and in case of even years it is 20 okay that's not very important observation but you can uh, remember it that 15 to 20 questions are coming from history and art and culture okay 15 selected 20 questions that are history and art and culture so you can easily understand the weightage of history okay i have given here the pie chart and whenever it is 15 to 20 questions you can easily understand that each question carries two marks so basically uh, this is not actually the question of CSAT, rather the question come in, in, in case of CSAT question becomes more tough, okay, or tougher. So this is very easy calculation, all of you know, okay. Uh, so in case of the uh, history, so 30 to 40 marks are coming from history, okay, and art and culture. So out of 230 to 40 marks from a single discipline, so you can understand the importance of history in the preliminary examination, okay. That is quite obvious and you can easily understand it I don't have to make you understand this okay so here I have given to pie chart to make you understand easily okay though I have told you that I don't have to make you understand okay so here in case of the audience so uh, at least hist the weight uh, this is even here okay the weightage of history is 20 percent because 40 this is the question of CSAT okay 40 marks out of 200 so if we express it in percentage so it is going to be something uh, 40 by 200 into 100 so basically it is nothing but 20 percent okay so 20 percent questions are coming in case of the even years and 15 percent questions are coming in case of the audience okay so 15 to 20 percent weightage of history especially in case of the preliminary examination in UPSC civil services examination okay let's try to find it out or let's try to analyze it more categorically okay more uh, we, we, we will try to analyze it uh, by dividing history into different segment okay like uh, in case of the history you already have seen that there in case of preliminary examination you have ancient history okay you have ancient history you have medieval history you have modern history and you have art and culture so basically in 2016 if you see the trend of questions which are coming from ancient history three questions from ancient three questions from medieval six questions from modern and five questions from art and culture and uh, in 2017, one question from ancient, one question from medieval, seven questions from modern and five questions from art and culture. 2018, two to 12. Here, yeah, this is 12. Okay, and five questions from art and culture. And in 2019, three, four, six, four. So basically, in case of art and culture, UPS is very constant. Okay, so, uh, you know, a very constant number of questions UPSC uh, is asking from R and Gaj. It's five or four, five or four, mostly five. And in case of 2019, it is four. Okay. So here UPSC is, you know, very static. Okay. Uh, let's uh, talk about the ancient India. Ancient India, you can find it out here. Three to two questions. You can, you know, even in 2019, three questions were asked from the ancient India. So three questions means three into two. That means six months. And especially student, uh, let me tell you here, student had a habit and student or aspirants not had, aspirants have a habit to skip the medieval India or to skip the medieval history who don't have optional as history actually. Uh, but if you have optional history, then you have to obviously go through medieval history very religiously. You cannot, you cannot skip any portion. Okay. So in case of the uh, medieval history, what is the trend, uh, what students or aspirants used to do? especially who don't have optional history. So basically they skip medieval history. I don't need to medieval history. Because 
cost benefit is very low what is cost benefit but number of questions coming okay so basically in medieval history the previous trend was only two to one question that used to come from the medieval history so for two to two or one question do se leke ek question ke liye कौन टोटल मेडिवल हिस्ट्री प्रिपेयर करेगा ओके सो दैट वाज द बेसिक ट्रेंड सो ये छोड़ दो भाई सो दैट वाज द ट्रेंड इन केस ऑफ द मेडिवल हिस्ट्री बट रिसेंटली यूपीएससी इज कमिंग आउट विथ न्यू न्यू सरप्राइज एवरी ईयर ओके सो दैट इज द रीजन व्हाई मोस्ट ऑफ यू यूज्ड टू कॉल यूपीएससी एज नॉट यूनियन पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन बट अनप्रेडिक्टेबल पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन ओके सो बेसिकली इन केस ऑफ 2019 फोर क्वेश्चंस केम फ्रॉम मेडिवल हिस्ट्री एंड इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी अ जोक so whenever it's four question it matters a lot that means four into two that means eight marks this eight marks can make you in the list or can make you out of the list okay so one thing i can tell you that preliminary examination is not going to make you as officer but it can stop you from becoming as officer ye ek bar dimag mein bitha lo okay that's very much important thing okay so that is what actually so whenever it is eight marks ho sakte hain in next year in 2020 upsc is coming with more medieval questions in the preliminary examination and if you don't prepare preliminary examination you are going to be in big trouble in that case so i think uh, you know we will we have designed medieval history in such a way that it will be very interesting for you and at the same time within 15 uh, to 20 hours program we will complete the whole medieval history for you so please join i will suggest you to join i will request you to join and you will get benefited definitely you will get benefited because in case of the medieval history you don't have to go through so many books just prepare our notes just go through our notes that will be enough for you okay so in case of the modern history i don't want to say anything because upsc is saying in favor of the modern history because 6 7 12 6 you know continuously upsc is asking more and more questions from the modern history so weightage of modern history it's a uh, very high in case of the upsc civil services preliminary examination it's from 12 to 24 because 2018 upsc asked 12 questions 12 questions mean 24 marks and whenever it is 6 questions that means 12 marks and rn culture you know 80 to 10 marks so you cannot skip any portion each and every portion has uh, uh, you know is important for your uh, preliminary examination all these four segments of the history ancient history medieval history and modern history okay so now let's talk about the mains examination here i have prepared another table for your mains examination from 2015 onwards so 2015 so se leke 2019 tak how many questions are coming from which portion of the history or which segment of history i have designed it here so here you can find out in case of 2015 so um, upsc asked uh, 25 marks uh, from ancient history and art and culture i have included art and culture with ancient history so in 2015 each questions because mains examination is descriptive and you know that history comes in the general studies paper 1 okay gs1 in the mains examination hai na gs1 in the mains examination which consists of 250 marks okay each general studies paper in the mains examination consists of 250 marks so in case of 2015 25 question or uh, 25 marks not 25 questions 25 marks were asked from general studies paper uh, from history ancient history and art and culture okay actually uh, in 2015 the uh, you know marks of each question Uh, was to 12.5 so they asked two questions so that is what it is 25 okay so 25 marks were asked from the ancient history and art and culture no question was asked from the medieval history that is one of the reason why most of the aspirants skip medieval history okay so okay theek hai so in case of the modern history 25 marks once again okay uh, in uh, 2015 and uh, in case of the world history 25 marks so in case of 2015 mains examination in case of 2015 mains examination somehow upsc became communist okay so believe down equality okay 25 marks from ancient 25 marks no it's not communist because in case of the medieval history it, it gave nothing to medieval history okay so in case of the um, ancient and rn culture 25 in in case of the modern history 25 in case of the world history 25 and finally total number which were asked from history that was 75 okay so 75 out of 250 once again it's a question of your csat how much percentage 30% okay because 75 by 250 into 100 okay so let me put it here 75 by 250 into 100 so it's going to be nothing but 30% okay so in case of the mains examination we can find it out that like preliminary examination history has 
as a single discipline, 30% fetish. So UPSC is very consistent. In case of 2016, you can find it out here that 75 marks were asked from the history, 25 once again from uh, ancient and art and culture, but this time more questions from the medieval, uh, modern history, no questions from medieval once again, and 12.5, that means one question from world history and total was 75. In 2017, okay, this time 10 from, that means one question actually UPSC asked, 10 uh, and UPSC just, uh, uh, you know, changed the marking pattern. So in this year, in 2017, they asked a 10 marker question from the ancient history and art and culture. And this year, okay, in 2017, somehow UPSC modern ke piche pad gaya tha, okay, 65 marks from the modern history, okay, and 10 from the uh, world history, once again 85, and in 2018, 25 from the uh, ancient and RN culture, this time UPSC became very kind to medieval history, okay, so this time UPSC asked 12.5 marks from the medieval history, that means one question from medieval history, and 25 from the mains exam uh, modern history, 12.5 from the world history, and total 75. Once again, UPSC was very unkind to the medi uh, medieval history in 2019. 10 from the ancient RN culture, no question from the medieval. 50 from the modern history, 15 from world history, and 75 from the 75 total the marks were asked from the history and RN culture. So, uh, what? you can find out the two important trends from here that most and most uh, most number of questions in case of the history are coming from the modern history but at the same time you have to prepare art and culture and ancient history very well because UPSC is very unpredictable all of you know they uh, next year they might come with a big surprise and where uh, which can make you out of the list so I don't think that you should take risk so in case of the medieval history also uh, in 2019 preliminary examination, you know, surprising everyone, they have asked four questions. And basically, uh, in 2020, it might be that uh, some questions are coming from medieval history. So I think that uh, a holistic preparation specially is required for uh, history. And specially, uh, you should keep or you should give importance to the all segments of the history. But special emphasis will be on the modern history that you can understand. Okay. Next. So here is the... Uh, you know pie chart for your understanding you already under you have understood it but pie chart this is history you know this green portion is history okay so the weightage of history you can find it out that 75 say like 85 marks are a history say so that means uh, 30 percent to you know uh, 35 percent the weightage of history in case of the mains examination so this is what the weightage of history in case of the mains examination. So, in case of preliminary and mains examination, UPSC is very consistent with respect to history. So, 30 to 40 percent questions are coming from, uh, not percent, 30 to 40 percent marks are coming from history. Okay. Okay. Now, let me tell you one more thing. Okay. That's, uh, I like to uh, speak on this. Okay. So, how history is going to help you in other general studies paper? Because history is directly in the part of uh, history is directly in your general studies paper one okay history is there so there you have to go through history directly for uh, answering the questions related to general studies paper so we were uh, talking about the importance or relevance of history in other general studies paper so uh, in case of the other general studies paper already i have told you that history and art and culture is a part of your general studies paper one which consists of 250 marks and weightage of history already you have seen 30 to 35 percent okay so in case of the general studies paper 2, I always talk about this particular thing that history, how history is going to help you in your inter general studies preparation for your basic civil services examination. Okay. So in case of general studies paper 2, uh, this is the broadly the syllabus of the general studies paper 2. Okay. In the men's examination, governance, constitution, polity, social justice and international relations, all you know. So here, let's talk about this constitution. So whenever you are going to uh, or uh, just study constitution or went through constitution, in that case, Prior knowledge of modern history will help you immensely to understand constitution. Specifically, when you are going through the background of Indian constitution making, in that case, if you understand uh, modern history properly, that is going to help you uh, immensely. Okay, and even uh, to understand the spirit of Indian constitution, you have to also understand the uh, you know ideals of our freedom struggle, and which is also going to help you immensely for understanding constitution very well. Okay, 
that we will see in our detail course okay so in case of international relations yes there also history has a lot of relevance how in case of the uh, international relations you know that uh, whenever you are going through suppose the indian relation with any other countries like china or usa so whenever you are going through india's relation with usa in that case you know that your prime knowledge on world history will help you immensely okay so when you are, whenever you are going through the background of the uh, relation between india and usa in that case your prior knowledge uh, on world history is going to help you immensely okay in case of the geostrategic paper 3 also history has a lot of relevance especially see here the topic security in case of security you know internal security you have to go through the insurgency in kashmir all you know that that has a lot of bearings with history okay so how this princely states were integrated and what is special about Kashmir, what is special about Junagadh and what is spe special about other princely states. Th these are going to be very important for you and especially already you have seen in case of the mains examination syllabus with respect to history you have post independence in your syllabus. So whenever you are preparing that portion that is going to help you immensely here especially when you are going through the security portion. Okay, like, like you know Nakshalite movement there also you have to go through if you have prior knowledge on modern history, especially uh, the root cause of Nakshalite movement was basically the land reform and there you have a lot of bearings with modern history, okay. Even in your ethics paper that is just this paper 4, history has so, uh, you know relevance. Like whenever you are going through in case of your ethics paper, the ideals or ideology or the values which were uh, actually preached by the leaders global leaders, international leaders or our leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, leaders like Abraham Lincoln, leaders like uh, you know uh, Martin Luther okay so basically in that case also whenever you are going through these portions okay in your general studies paper for ethics because you have to go through the, the thinkers, thinkers, intellectuals in your general studies paper 4 that is in ethics and the same I, uh, thing you will go through in your world history or modern history. In case of the modern history, you have to go through the ideals of Mahatma Gandhi and which is going to help you immensely, especially in your studies paper 4. So my uh, focus point is main point what I am trying to emphasize on. Basically, if you have a very good knowledge over history, so history is going to help you immensely in your entire general studies preparation for your basic civil services examination. So my uh, suggestion is, not because I am just, we are going to launch a course on history, okay, not because of that. So you just think what I am talking is logical or not. So basically if you go through history, it's going to help you immensely, okay. Now uh, many students, why I have kept it here, this question came in 2019 prelims paper from medieval history, okay, once again this question from medieval history because you have already seen four questions from medieval history in 2019 prelims paper, okay, so in case of 2019 prelims paper this question came, why I have put here this question, the main reason is that, you know, um, you have some uh, wrong conception in many cases that history is basically you don't have to go through uh, or newspaper reading has uh, no relation with uh, history preparation yes there are some relations see this question came in 2019 prelims paper with respect to Mia Tanshen okay I consider this question as a difficult question because this question was asked on me Mia Tanshen and all you know that Mia Tanshen was a medieval character and especially where the students or aspirants have the habit to skip the medieval history and how can they uh, uh, you know remember or gather so many informations of, about, about Mia Tanshen and the you know statement which were given about the Mia Tanshen were not very easy statement okay these are a uh, little bit difficult statement and not available in the regular book which you go through for your preparation okay so the source of this question you know in 2019 preliminary uh, examination if you have gone through the newspaper of last one year there was an article came in the Hindu newspaper on Mia Tanshin and believe me all these informations which were kept here which were given here in the question paper or the statements about statement about Mia Tanshin which were given here from that article of the Hindu okay for your convenience I have kept this article here okay this is the article on Mia Tanshin from where so whenever you are going through newspaper even if you find out any uh, you know historical character of medieval whatever or modern India or ancient India just note it down okay and just note it down important points about that personality or that historical event okay so that is what also very important okay now sources finally I'm going to discuss the sources sources for ancient India you know NCRT reading is very important okay very important uh, uh, especially NCRT reading is very important so ancient for ancient history you know this is class 12 textbook NCRT class 12 textbook this is the themes in Indian history part one this book is 
going to be immensely important for medieval history preparation i will suggest you to go through this particular book themes in india history part 2 okay for uh, modern history you know this book is very important your class 12 book modern history uh, ncert themes in modern history that is part 3 this is the uh, modern history book okay that is going to help you in your modern history preparation and students like this book i also like this book uh, a brief modern india that is a spectrum publication uh, written by rajiv ahir he was an he is an ips officer not was he is an ips officer so it, this book is written by him okay this is also a very good book you can go through this book and basically my suggestion especially in case of main answer writing uh, bipan chandra is going to be little bit more good or a little bit better with respect to this rajiv ahir wala book so in case of this more uh, indian struggle for independence this book is very good book especially i have given here the list of chapters you don't this book is too bulky and you don't have to go through each and every chapter of this book for your conception building especially for the mains mains answer writing you have to go through this particular chapters i have given here the list of the chapters okay uh, you know keeping pace with the trend of questions of upsc examination and eyeing on the syllabus of upsc examination okay that's what about the modern history preparation okay this book is also important because uh, this book uh, bipan chandra that starts with 1857 so before 1857 in case of uh, you can go through this particular book for your mains answer writing that is going to help you immensely because if you see the question paper of the mains examination especially with respect to uh, history modern history the questions are little bit difficult in some time okay so that's why or little bit you know tricky sometimes so that's why i am asking you to go through this particular book for your mains answer writing and for enriching your mains answer writing especially enrichment of your mains answer writing so in case of the uh, modern history this is also another go go good book from palashi to partition by sekhar vandapadhyay so here i have also given the list of the chapters this chapters you just go through this chapter nothing more than that okay for post independence this book is very good okay so politics in india since independence this is class 12 ncert book this book you can go through okay for world history themes in world history yes this is class 11 textbook of ncert and this is ml mukherjee okay or uh, l mukherjee sorry ml mukherjee the publisher l mukherjee professor l mukherjee is a professor of calcutta university okay you can this book is uh, very popular nowadays okay so th you can go through this book here i have uh, put here the wrong image actually this is uh, this book has three different parts so you have to go through already you have seen that in case of the world history you have modern world history in your syllabus so this book is about not about the modern world history but the same book by el mukherjee which is uh, about the uh, modern world history that you have to go through okay for world history and other ncerts which are also important because in many cases if you see the question paper of the past years that many informations were just uh, taken out from the ncert books and given in the question paper so we cannot neglect ncerts anyway okay so that is why i am just going to tell you that uh, in case of the uh, any preparation of any discipline for upsc civil services examination ncerts are the obvious sources okay so in case of the um, other uh, books which are related to your history preparation in ncert books which are related to your history preparation this is a very good book okay indian contemporary world part 1 textbook of class 9 and especially this book indian contemporary world part 2 that is uh, textbook of class 10 okay these two books are also very important okay so you can go through these two books so what i am going to share you one particular thing that is you can uh, think about that this is nothing but bogus propaganda but i am i want to tell you here in our course we are going to prepare notes by using all these materials okay and there we will uh, write each and every point in in, in a bullet form and uh, with proper images and we will you know make history very lucid and going to make history very lucid with uh, you know very interesting way so basically uh, if you enroll in our course so uh, you don't have to go through all this ncert separately you will get ready made notes which we will make by using this ncert books okay and the other sources which i have mentioned so far okay now finally strategy of reading strategy of reading firstly historiography what is historiography studying uh, you know historiography means reading history with critical eyes okay reading history with critical eyes okay what is critical eyes you know 
finding uh, logic behind each and every event. Okay, that is what critical is very simply. I am just putting it here. Okay, next understanding elements of changes and element of continuity that is going to be very important for your history preparation. Okay, element of changes, changes and element of continuity from a one particular age to another particular age. Which elements of history? You know, elements means the social policy, the religious policy, the administration. What are going to be changed and what are going to be continued? If you understand this particular thing once, in that case, history is being going to be a piece of cake for you. And finally, developing rational thinking that is related to this critical eyes. And finally, practice, practice, and practice. That's going to make you, or if you just follow this particular strategy, you are going to secure very good marks in history. Okay, so that's all for today. I will uh, uh, end the class here. And finally, best of luck for your preparation and just prepare well. And if you like this video, you can subscribe, you can like, and you can comment. If you have any question in the comment box, I will definitely answer. I promise it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much to all of you.